Right then, firstly, um, welcome everyone to this chat talent session. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Alan Walker. This is our 15th webinar since we launched in the autumn of last year. And uh, so far we've, we've covered some great topics, I think. And I hope we've provided some excellent learning as well for everybody. Um, the back catalogue, should you have not attended all of them live, is on the website and it's also on our, our YouTube channel. I'll pop the links into the chat for everybody if you want to go back and see what we've done in the past. Um, with me today is Richard, Richard Collins, um, who's the Chief Exec of Click IQ. And just a little bit about Click IQ. Today isn't really about that, uh, but Click IQ allows recruiters to um, access the UK's largest network of pay per click recruitment media, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's award winning and it's a piece of AI powered recruitment marketing technology. Have I got that right, Richard? Perfect. And it lets you run automated campaigns and optimises advertising performance. It makes sure that your ads basically are in the right channels at the right time and the most efficient level of spend. Um, but as I said, today isn't really about Click IQ. We are running, though, in a couple of weeks' time, a Talent Tech Tuesday session, session where we'll be going into it in much more detail. So if you're interested, we might want to sign up to that. I'll pop the link to that also in the chat. What Richard is here today to do is tell us about 10 different ways that recruitment marketers can um, take advantage of the modern media landscape, one that's very scary, even, um, even for me, who's constantly around and in and out of it and trying to do as much as possible to raise the profile of, of chat and talent. Things change all the time. Uh, and for you guys, it's all about engaging, attracting and hiring the very best talent. So uh, Richard's going to try and show us how to do that <laughs> and we're also going to talk about facebook jobs so uh, for those that haven't heard about it this is very much on the horizon and coming quickly and um and we'll answer as many questions as we can um, about the content that rich is going to deliver and um, anything else that remotely is troubling you or you want to uh, you want to know um, feel free to submit those questions through the q a button that's either sitting at the top of your screen or the bottom of your screen depending on which browser you're using um, we might answer those on the fly. If I know Richard's going to cover those off as he works, walks through his presentation, I'll leave them to the end. But uh, enough of me, Richard, um, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Alan. Now, how do we do the, how should we try the power of technology to... Uh... Let's go for it. You should just be able to do share screen. Yeah. Do you want uh, to continue? I do. And then yours will take over from mine. Okay, PowerPoint sounds good. Share screen. There we go. Does that work? Yeah, perfect. Amazing. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for the introduction, Alan. No um, I probably should um, apologize for being such a scruff bag this morning. The, um, we, we got back from Dublin late last night as part of the uh, TA Tech conference over there, um, where I was talking about the exciting world of click fraud. And uh, I'll be honest, I was, I was completely brain dead and, and didn't think that I might actually be viewed by any human being. So uh, <laughs> I would have made more of an effort if I had a thought about that. I won't um, worry, I've not had a shave for about six weeks, Richard. Don't worry about can, it. You're far more presentable than me. <laughs> compared to your picture in the bottom down here, it's uh, quite the difference, actually. It's coming on nicely, isn't it? At some point, you will have to tame that, though. I'm leaving the house next week to go to a couple of events. <laughs> I'm going to have a trim tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. It'll only get me into trouble. Um, anyway, so the the kind of um, as as Alan said, the, the the purpose of what I wanted to do today um, was to uh, share with everyone um, some of the kind of um, things that um, our clients talk to us about and the, the ways that we we try and help them. Um, things that you can do to effectively harness. Um, the, the stuff that's going on in, at the moment in terms of media and technology landscape and all the changes that are happening and to try and um, put that into some perspective. So I've got um, a couple of intro slides from, from Quick IQ, though to be fair, Alan has completely stolen my thunder already on that. Um, and then I will uh, talk about some of those changes and, and how we see that fitting into it. So um, lots of buzzwords, but let, kind of put it into a structure so people can hopefully make more sense of it. And then uh, very quickly lead into what are um, our sort of top 10 ways that we think that talent attraction teams can, can harness this stuff and use it to, to effectively find great talent, which is, which is what it's about. So if I kick off in terms of um, Quick IQ, just a little bit of background. So basically, for those that don't know us, 
Um, we are, well, we describe ourselves as an intelligent talent attraction technology. Um, and I'll explain what that sort of means in a second. But basically, we work with a lot of very large brands. Um, we are now award winning, very proud of that, the On Rec Record um, Best Technical Innovation Award the other week, though unfortunately the snow meant we weren't actually able to go and collect it, which is a shame. But we work with these big companies, and effectively what we're trying to do is, is help them to manage and automate the top of the, the talent funnel. Um, so to spread their message as far as possible so that they can make sure they find the best people. So we work with people from volume recruiters like Paddy Power, uh, Mitchells and Butler to more specific, uh, you know, specialist recruiters working in, for example, uh, nursing sector. So in terms of uh, our actual um, tech itself and our platform, so this is uh, the, the, the picky on the right is, is, a, is a screen grab, obviously, from that. And effectively what we do is we, we take a client's jobs, we plug them into the platform, we then distribute those jobs across um, an active uh, network of job seekers, so paperclip job boards, and also we are able to target passive seekers as well through our connection through to um, social, um, so Facebook and Instagram. And then effectively what the, the technology then takes over, there's lots of machine learning and, and all those kind of words that you hear about a lot. Um, um, but the aim basically is to manage your our clients' advertising across that network so that we, we reach the right people. So ultimately, the, the aim is to allow our clients to not be spending their time managing jobs, but actually be focusing on talent. So that's, that's kind of where we approach this from. Um, and what is interesting is that we only exist now because we couldn't have existed at any other time, because the technology that we are using and the way that the media landscape is changing, you know, is, is, is quite a unique moment in time. And we've seen a lot of those changes um, in the US already. Um, but I kind of tried to think about what the key sort of words and trends, I probably could have made a word cloud out of this to make it uh, look prettier, but I kind of wanted to pick out some of the, the key sort of themes for that. And I think as an industry, you know, there's so much stuff going on, and it is um, incredibly difficult. You know, when you're when you're trying to run a talent team and trying to attract people into your organisation, you know, which, which of these things should you be chasing after? Is it chatbots? Is it Facebook? Is it Google for jobs? You know, all of this stuff. And um, I think it gets incredibly confusing. But what we found was, um, in terms of how we think about it, rather than just all of this noise there is actually a bit of a cheat and that is all the stuff that is happening within recruitment media and all the technology has actually been here before so but it's been here from a from looking at the digital marketing uh, world so you know people talk about the fact that recruitment advertising is 10 years behind all this kind of stuff well i'm not sure that's necessarily true but certainly the kind of evolution that we saw within digital recruit within digital marketing sorry we are now seeing and are able to map over to the recruitment world. And because of that, we can, we can therefore start to see where the thing is going. Um, and just to help sort of put all these things into perspective. So it all started with organic search, you know, coming to the top of search engines. Then those search engines needed to start making money. So Google charged on a pay-per-click basis. Once you got to a pay-per-click basis, then Lots of websites started coming together so they could sell lots of sites uh, from one place and the, the birth of network and making sure that adverts reached a lot, as large an audience as possible. You then needed technology to manage it. That's where programmatic buying and optimization came in. And then finally, all of those tasks needed to be automated because it's getting very, very complicated and people didn't have time. So that's what happened in digital marketing. The same thing literally uh, point by point has happened within the recruitment world as well. And we're kind of, we've seen the move to pay-per-click in the US. So um, something like 90% of all recruitment advertising in the US is bought on a pay-per-click basis. And indeed, as a $2 billion revenue, uh, world's largest job board, you know, has been really at the forefront of that. We're now seeing the smaller job boards clubbing together um, and selling on a kind of network basis. And then technology like ours allows you to sort of manage that and automate it. So those, all of that, all that sort of cloud of words really can be distilled into this evolution that we're seeing within our industry. 
So hopefully... Richard, quick question on here, actually. So you, you say we're kind of following a little bit with um, more traditional digital marketing. Is there anything, mm -hmm. what's, what's the next step then? Where, what are they doing that we're not even thinking about yet? Is there anything? Yeah, I mean, this, this last point, automation, if you look at HubSpot, Infusionsoft, Pardo, all of those guys, um, they, they are doing all, proper automation and rules-based marketing. So effectively, um, it, it's about, if you think about each job as being individual, and, and rather than doing the same stuff for every single job, you, you actually want to be doing something you know, unique for each job because it, it will respond differently. So, for example, um, we, we have a rules engine that effectively does the same kind of thing. And, and what you can do within the rules engine, you can say, you know, first of all, I want to advertise my job on the organic only, so I don't want to pay any money. But if I haven't had more than 10 applications within four days, maybe I want to sponsor that. If after 10 days I haven't had 15 applications, then I actually want to promote that on Facebook jobs so that I can then go after passive candidates. And, and you know, you, you start to build a unique um, sort of mapping process where each job is dealt with differently and is adapted in real time. So really all the um, digital marketing world is, is focused very much on this kind of automation. HubSpot is a, you know, it's a billion dollar company, it's huge. Um, and something like 500,000 companies worldwide use marketing automation software. Whereas if you look within the recruitment marketing world, you know, you, you, you're talking dozens rather than tens of thousands. And I think that the similar type of companies that are using this tech will also be doing the same stuff from a recruitment point of view because it just saves massive amounts of time and it makes the, the advertising spend that much more effective. Yeah, every, every, every penny you spend is, is going to deliver something in essence, or, or most of it anyway. And it, it's kind of like, it's, um, you know, it's like, um, you know, they have that DEF CON thing where the nuclear thing kind of gets more and more serious. It's, it's that type of approach, you know, where you, you, you advertise the job and instead of waiting for all your advertisers to come to the end and realize that you haven't got any and then repeat the same madness, um, it, it actually intervenes before, before that happens. So you can see partway through the campaign, you know, if I haven't hit these metrics, then I want to elevate it to the next level and I want to apply more budget or you know more uh, media channels or whatever it might be and and it should do that automatically rather than having a human being doing each one individually because if you are a decent sized employer and you've got thousands of jobs it, it becomes impossible to, to manage manually and I guess that the time is now for anybody thinking about doing this stuff because in 12 months 18 months time everybody will be doing it so if you want to get ahead of them you've got to kind of move quickly yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's a definite advantage to moving now. I mean, if you look at the pay-per-click stuff, we, we, right now the, the, the cost of pay-per-click is ridiculously low. Um, but as more and more people enter that market, you, you'll get this kind of clickflation. So as in the prices of the clicks go up as more people uh, compete for it. So the, the quicker you move into those spaces, the, the faster you will be able to then take advantage of, of that. And invariably, other stuff will come along in the future that, again, if you have that um, early mover advantage, you know, there will be benefits to doing that. Um, Google for jobs, that I'll mention later, is, an, is another good example, assuming they ever arrive. <laughs> Excellent. Cheers. Um, so, so that's hopefully set the scene in terms of, um, you know, some of those changes in how we see the world. Um, the next, the rest of the presentation is very much relating to what those, those 10 tips that I talk, talked about. Um, they're in some order, but sort of not as well. Um, the first one kind of is. So my, my first and our first, um, our first tip is about using Indeed um, organic for high responding roles. So in fact, Indeed, I say world's largest job board. Um, if, if you do nothing else, make sure that you are putting your jobs within the organic feed of Indeed because they will generate an enormous amount of free traffic for your business. If you're a direct employer, you know, it is, the, it is without doubt the most single most important thing that I think you should be doing. Um, I actually took a, a quick um, slide out of a case study. This is for um, a client of ours, a volume recruiter working in the hospitality industry. And uh, generally this year, they generated over 15,000 applications uh, purely through Indeed organic results. Um, I can't think of a single media or any, any other method that will generate that number of 
applications for that little amount of money that I've ever come across in recruitment. So that would be my number one thing, I think, that I would recommend to anyone uh, if they're not already doing that. Just one point on, on Indeed. Um, and by the way, I think at the moment Indeed's amazing. Uh, we, yeah. I'm not a recruiter nowadays. I advise others on how to recruit. But clients who are going for volume, um, entry level up to relatively kind of middle management, um, if they don't use Indeed, they're missing such a huge potential opportunity there. So I'm a big advocate call for it. That yeah, said, man. though, there's talk, this talk um, in certain circles of Indeed being impacted once Google for Jobs gains traction. And is, there a, is the effectiveness of it going to be reduced at all, do you think? Um, based on the American um, experience, then probably yes. Um, okay. That said, Google for jobs and the way that it appears within Google's listing um, means that Indeed are still sponsoring the results above Google for jobs. Um, so they're still picking up that traffic and they're still in the organic stuff below Google for jobs. Um, at the conference yesterday, somebody made a really interesting point, and they, they suggested that the reason that we haven't seen Google for jobs um, in the UK um, or in Europe generally is because of the fact that there is a, um, a legal battle going on at the moment with uh, Google with regard to their, mono, their monopoly practices. I know there's another word, but I can't say it. Um, their monopoly practices and uh, a big 2.3 billion euro fine and, and this kind of stuff. And, and apparently this person stated that um, Google for jobs effectively, because it's a price comparison thing, or it's seen as that, one of the reasons why we haven't seen it yet in Europe could be due to this uh, lawsuit. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Sorry. I have no actual inside knowledge though, so I could well be making all of that up. Fine, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Um, so that, that was my first point. Second point is um, ooh, my second point is to use sponsored um, listings for the harder to fill roles. Um, so this is where effectively once you are in the listings, over time your your ads drop down uh, the listing. So effectively by sponsoring them, you you boost them back up again. Um, so if we go back to our friends here, um, our his hospitality example. Whilst it's amazing that Indeed produced 15,000 or so applications for nothing, what you'll also see is um, there, are, there was 3,500 jobs advertised. So by the time you do some quick maths, you realize that's only five applications per job. So actually, okay, they have probably got half the amount of applications they, they needed to fill all of these roles. So for a start, they'll probably want to, if they've got any sense, top these up because I know for a fact that they get a lot of responses to, you know, things like waiting jobs and all that kind of thing. But for chefs where they are much harder to find, actually they're getting very little, if, if zero, in fact, applications. And that's where you then need to direct your spend to. It's very easy, I think, to end up burning a lot of your budget on these high responding jobs um, if you're not managing them properly. Um, yes, you need the volume for the uh, easy to fill roles, use the organic, but then use the sponsored um, jobs to actually promote those harder to fill roles. So in reality, um, these guys probably need another, probably another 15,000 again, um, responses to actually fill every single one of those three and a half thousand jobs. That said, the cost of doing that would be pretty small for that number of jobs compared to, for example, if they went through um, you know, the usual sort of channels that you'd expect. Um, and I can actually put some numbers on that. So this is, um, this is a, I tried to, tried to find something really niche. And this is something that we did. Uh, we've run this campaign twice now, once uh, quarter three last year, and we've just um, towards the end of it now. And effectively, it's for um, a care home group, and they were recruiting uh, nurses in their care homes. And, you know, these recruiting uh, nurses is really, really difficult. Um, Brexit has made it even more so, and um, they're, they're very difficult to find. So I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical when um, we were first approached, but you know what? We'll, we'll give it a go. And what the great thing is, because you're only paying per click, if you don't get any response, you, you don't pay anything. So, you know, the, the risk is, is minimal. And what we're actually able to do, we, 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 we took the role, we, we, we put them out there um, based around Midlands and Devon. So even that makes it harder. Um, and we actually managed to get uh, 44 hires for the company at a cost per hire of 187 quid. Now, 
in this sector, that is just unbelievable. And I think that if you went out there and you took the traditional approach of spreading those jobs over massive numbers of duration-based boards, I would be surprised if you were able to do it at this rate. And the reason for that is because you're getting relatively small numbers of clicks and you're paying per click, it becomes a really efficient way of, of hiring these people. Um, we actually ran, this is from the second campaign, and the cost per application came down to, some, I think it's £12.57 in the end. Um, but again, Indeed Dominate, ooh, keep doing that. Um, Indeed Dominate, um, 703 applications this time around, and they're hiring more than one in 10. So it, it worked really well. Um, number three, let's have some water. Um, the traditional um, uh, approach is that, you know, employers tend to just put their job ads um, where that they have done historically, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But I think what is really interesting is that you can, by, by using pay-per-click job boards, it allows you to do something that you, you, you can't do, and that is you, it gives the ability to throw that net really, really wide, but without having to take that media risk, because again, you're paying on a pay-per-click basis. So effectively, the more places you can plug those jobs in, the more likely you are to find the best candidates. Um, and that's, that's um, on the screen is, is um, I think we plug into 23 now, uh, different pay-per-click job boards. There's also, um, an emergence of a uh, network. So people like ZipRecruiter, and effectively what those guys do is they they do things like um, they run the jobs by email service for a lot of traditional job boards, and they then embed pay-per-click advertising in those jobs by email. They also put in um, backfill. So if you're on a, a traditional job board, you do a search and there's no results, then it pulls out of, of their listings. And effectively it allows you to um, plug into multiple sources through one. And it's similar to, as I said earlier, about what happened within the digital marketing space. When Google came along in digital marketing, everyone before then, people would sell the inventory on their own, on their own sites. But over time, it became very difficult to compete against people like Google. So all these sites sort of grouped together and double click and real media. And we're seeing a similar sort of approach uh, happening within um, the recruitment advertising world as well. Uh, and I say Zip Recruit and JobGate are two really good examples of this that, that we also plug into. But it just means that you can it allows you to distribute those job ads, job ads as, as wide as um, as possible. Richard, um, someone's just asked a question on the chat, and it's a good time actually I think, to ask: Is that um, is that pay per click network growing? Uh, more and more channels joining it? Yeah, very much so. I mean. I think, you know, if you looked at, um, I saw um, an analysis of um, all the big uh, recruitment advertising groups. And what was interesting, all of those that worked on a traditional paying for duration basis, their numbers are going down, the revenue's going down. It, it, it's, it's pretty tough out there for those guys. Yet players like Indeed, you know, their revenue's going up. And they're the only, you know, it's only people that are working on this pay-per-click that seem to be enjoying that. And the reason is that, if you're working on a paper click basis, you don't as a as a job board, you don't get the churn. Because if you think about it, if I'm a client, I advertise on a, a traditional duration based board and I don't get any responses, I'm gonna be unhappy. Whereas if I'm paying on a pay per click basis, if I don't get any responses, then so what? You know? It yeah, I prefer it if I would have done, but I haven't I haven't paid for any of that. So as a result, you tend to get much greater engagement with clients if you're a job board and you move into that um, model. In the US, Indeed dominate, and basically all of the other job boards have followed Indeed to offer that. Um, based again on this um, conference in Dublin, I, I think that we will see uh, those traditional job boards, they're, they're obviously very nervous and they're not gonna just immediately switch from one to the other. But I think what you'll see is they will start to offer advertisers the ability to pick which one that they want. You know, Do you wanna buy on duration or do you wanna buy on pay-per-click? Um, and I think that over time, they will gradually all shift towards that model just because the advertisers prefer it. You know, it's as simple as that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not all, it's all roses because if you, um, if you advertise and you're not managing your jobs properly, the pay-per-click boards can burn budget on easy to fill roles real fast. So you have to make sure you have some mechanism by which you can manage that or else it'll cost you a load of money and you'll get the wrong sort of responses. Um, 
But on the other hand, if you're doing it properly, you are managing it effectively, you're using software to do that, then it becomes super effective and super cost effective. Excellent. Cheers. Um, so the next one, um, this kind of relates to the previous point. Um, in terms of the way that perhaps um, media buying has been done uh, historically, and, and Google tells me that a historian looks, a historian looks like that, and a statistician looks like that. Um, but effectively, this kind of approach of you know we we analysed uh, our past results, we saw how many applications we got, we divided it by how much money we spent, and that gives us a cost effectiveness of that particular media channel. The historical approach, or the statistical approach, which is they say that this job board has X number of users within this particular area. Well, there are problems with both. Firstly, the historical approach, it doesn't work on a job level, it just aggregates. So if you're gonna load a rubbish, you know, how do you tell the difference? Secondly, the world changes. So uh, job board A might be really great today, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna be great tomorrow. Um, from a statistical approach, um, I think I'm a, I'm a bit of a kind of lies, dumb lies and statistics kind of guy in the, 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 the word, you know, when people do this stuff, they do, it's marketing and it's there to present themselves in the best way. And, you know, usually their, their latest audited results are happen to happen at exactly the same time that they carry out their TV campaign, for example. Um, and, and that's the problem. Whereas if you're working on actually um, managing your advertising in, in real time so that you know you you are tracking the response rates that you're getting you're you're adjusting how much you're paying per click based on on those levels of responses then we move from this kind of historical this is how we used to do it therefore it'll work in the future to actually moving more real time and that screen grab that you can see is is a screenshot of uh, just one job on our network and all the spiky graphs all that's showing is that over time the, the system is adjusting how much it is paying per click based upon the level of demand that it is seeing. So the client has said, I want 10 applications. The system says, right, I will try and generate you 10 applications at the lowest possible cost. If I'm not getting enough, I'll increase the bids. If I'm getting enough, I will lower the bids. And that is happening in real time. And then behind the scenes, the machine learning piece is, is, is learning from it. So it learns from every click on every board. Okay, this is what happened last time. So next time, this is what I can do to make it even more efficient. And that, I think, is how we will all move from this traditional, historic, and statistical approach to actually doing proper um, management and, and real-time optimization of our, our advertising. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, on to number five. Um, so we all know about the uh, recruitment funnel. Uh, it's wide at the top, it's thin at the bottom. Um, statistics tell us that one in five interviews lead to a hire, one in five applications lead to an interview, and 7.6% of clicks convert to applicants, apparently. Um, what, what that very rapidly leads to is the fact that you're gonna need at least 250 clicks to kind of to find the right people. And, and, and while that's fine and, and easier to, to kind of um, recruit areas, in skill shortage areas, Actually, those you, you don't get enough of the top to get to the bottom. So one really good tip is to use um, retargeting to, to get people where they drop off from the top to the bottom. So effectively, you, you, can, you can track people when they start the process to when they complete the process. And for those people that don't complete the process, you can actually use um, you know, dynamically created job ads to retarget those people to try and make that funnel as efficient as possible um, so that they, they do complete those applications um, and the whole thing works much more smoothly and is a closed system and is more efficient uh, through those processes. Number six, good old programmatic. Um, so talked a lot about um, job boards and active job seekers. Um, as we all know, that's, that's, that's great, um, but in reality, it doesn't work for everything. Um, so therefore, you, you know, you're into how do you attract uh, applicants in those skill shortage areas um, who are not, reply, not responding to, to the job boards. And this is where the whole social programmatic thing uh, comes in. Um, what it does is it allows you to uh, create campaigns you can do targeting based on geography, 
Uh, you can even do demographics. Uh, I have an issue with this whole uh, targeting women certain age, as it's, it's shown as a, an example here. But um, and, and I know Alan and I have, have talked about this, haven't we, about whether you're actually allowed to do that. I, I'm, I'm skeptical, and I certainly wouldn't advise it, um, but you can. Um, and effectively, you can use it to target, um, let's say you're looking for a Java developer in Slough, for example. You know, you could set a, a parameter in terms of a location. <laughs> you could then look at the sort of sites that uh, those type of people have been looking at, and then you can deliver um, action-based advertising to those people. So it's not just about employer branding, but actually trying to get people to, um, you know, sh demonstrate an interest in a particular job or to apply uh, on that site to, to bring them into that to that sort of funnel uh, and then nurture them through the application process. I think that that um, demographic piece of targeting individuals, I think, yeah, it's dodgy ground. I think you can take positive action. I think if you're still seen to be advertising the role in very broad, openly accessible places that everybody can technically find, I think little spikes of, of, of additional advertising, particular target groups, are kind of looked on as okay. But if all you were doing through your advertising was targeting one particular uh, segment or one particular demographic, then, um, yeah, you, you're definitely on dodgy ground there. Um, yeah, just while we're on this, sorry, I missed this one in the chat. Thomas asked a question here. Um, for the retargeting piece, what kind yeah. of retargeted advert could you show to an applicant that hadn't been selected for an interview? So I guess that would be something around the careers and keeping them warm for future opportunities. Yeah, more I'm talking about people that haven't completed the application. Yeah. Once they're into the application, once they've completed an application process, you can't really retarget them. There's a whole load of um, you know, tech out there that you can perhaps use to manage the application through to interview and whether you want to bring people back into the process or not. Um, but specifically what I'm talking about is where people have started the application process or and um, the start of the application for me is when they click on an ad because that's expressing an interest in that particular advert, isn't it? And then whether they go through to actually complete that application. And as long as you've got those two bits tagged, um, and I know from, from our, you know, it's, it's relatively straightforward to do that. Um, then you just take one from the other and you can um, then retarget them with either the same ad to try and get them complete or similar ads in the same location uh, to, again, try and try and get them to complete if perhaps the other ad that they uh, started, one wasn't, wasn't of interest enough for them to apply. Don't get me wrong, I don't think you should bully people through the application process. You need people who are motivated and if they're not motivated, you don't want them to an extent. However, when we're talking about very competitive sectors, let's say IT, then actually you, you need to, you can't just leave them to it. You, you actually want to try and encourage that and, and get them to complete those uh, applications. Um, and actually that sort of relates to this one here. And that is um, regarding employer rating. So, you know, we hear an awful lot about EVP, employer branding, all of that stuff. And um, we're at an in-house event and, and somebody is asking, well, I, you know, that's great, but I find it really difficult to justify and uh, say to explain, you know, build a business case for why it's important to do this, because what is the return on it, you know? And um, actually, this, this is a piece of research that I saw that effectively it shows that your employer brand rating, so particularly on people like Indeed and Glassdoor that, that give these sort of metrics and allow people to review employers, um, the, there's a direct correlation between your um, employer branding and your conversion rate from click to apply. So effectively, if you go from a two to a four star rating, your conversion rate doubles. If your conversion rate doubles, effectively you are getting twice as many applications for the same amount of money, or you can half your media spend depending on, on how you look at it. So that is a, a really great argument in terms of if you need to build that business case, um, you know, why it's important to do that. Don't get me wrong, um, I do not agree with this whole lipstick on a pig thing where, um, you know, you try and present your your employer in such a positive light and then the reality is very different. You need to obviously sort that stuff out separately. But if you, you know, it is important equally to put your best foot forward, so to speak. So next one, this is kind of a biggie. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah. Ready for Google for jobs and Facebook jobs. So we all know, uh, well, I imagine we all know, 
Um, the amount of noise that's been made, I'd be staggered if we didn't. So Google um, owns the top of the funnel. You know, 70% of all job searches start at Google. They are a monster, monster company, and uh, they have decided that they want to do something about the, the world of recruitment. And, you know, there's lots of arguments about why this is happening now. Is it to do with Microsoft's acquisition of LinkedIn? Is it because uh, Indeed are taking a huge chunk of revenue that they believe should be rightly theirs? Um, they say it's because they think that the, um, the search is broken for jobs and they want to improve that by providing much better filtering tools so that people can more directly to the jobs that they want to find. Um, I'd say it is, it is live and happening in the US and uh, certainly some people have seen big effects of this um, in terms of the amount of traffic that they're getting. And I think really all I've got to say about this is when it does arrive, there's a couple of things that are important and will make people have to do. First of all, you, you need to make sure that within the actual code of your jobs, the HTML, they are tagged so that Google knows that they are jobs and should be included in that. Secondly, this, we're going a bit old school here. You need to make sure that the copy that you've written for your job ad is, is written well enough that it actually will appear towards the top of this because Google for jobs coming along will not magically make your jobs appear at the top. You know, you, you have to make sure that those jobs are written well, you know, that you're thinking about the sort of keywords that you're using within it. Your site is linked to other sites so that you've got this whole um, positive um, referral thing that they, they like from, from inbound links. Um, you've got lots of content on it. And I also understand that they are, they look at the actual application process itself. And if you've got a long, horrible, old school, um, you know, application process, then actually they, they will downgrade you. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on in there, but I think it ultimately comes down to well-written ads, make sure the things tagged, Google will do the rest for you. Um, Facebook jobs, however, is a, is a slightly different fish. So Facebook jobs, um, was it last week, week before last? Uh, announced that they are officially rolling out to um, 40 more countries outside of the US. And they positioned it as um, a kind of blue collar LinkedIn was, was kind of how, how it was reported on. Um, I am one of the few it would seem that is able to, to show that. And Alan, do you want me to show people what that looks like um, in reality? Would that yes, be definitely. Let's hope it doesn't let you down. <laughs> Yeah, it might, but we'll, we'll have a go. All right, hang on. All right, how do I? Oh, no, it's already let me down. So how do I now share a uh, screen? Oop. Can you? All right, can you cancel. Share my... Yeah, I can see your um, presentation. Oh, yeah, no, we're fine. I can see your presentation's now minimised. Yeah. If you click on the share screen at the bottom again. Um, share I got screen. It. New share? New share, yeah. And Safari, here we go. Right, can you see my screen now? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right, this is very brave. Logging into your personal Facebook account on <laughs> a webinar with lots of people watching. Let's hope none of your idiot friends send you a <laughs> I, I don't have friends, so it's We've okay. all got them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is what, for me, Facebook jobs looks like. So, you'll see on the left-hand side, we have some ability to search. Um, you've got some categories that you can uh, include, and then you've got some job types uh, as well. And effectively, you do a search, and it will it will bring up a list of jobs that look something like the ones that I've got. Um, there is not a lot of content there at the moment, by the way. If I were to then click on an apply button, it would then give me a bit more um, information about this particular job, and you can see. There's a jobs tab here within this person's page. Now, my uh, the Click IQ website, we do not have this job tab. So don't be surprised if you haven't yet. They're rolling it out. It's, it's not everything happening overnight. No, um, you then get are. some information about that particular job. And if I were to apply, now the company has two choices here. First of all, it, it um, effectively it, it sort of fills in all the, the details. Uh, you have to add your experience, all that kind of stuff. And when you click send, a couple of things can happen. Either it will direct you to um, the 
an email address, which if uh, the way that that advert has been set up will allow you to do that. The other thing it may do is direct you to um, Messenger, so Facebook Messenger. And this is where the whole world of chatbots start to sort of enter into the vocabulary because I think that you know, if you are going to be advertising and if you are directing people through to uh, LinkedIn Messenger, people will apply all times a day. We see it particularly uh, going back to those nurses. You know, that, that is a classic example of people who are on shift in the middle of the night and have had enough and search for jobs. And, you know, that is a, a great way of reaching these people. But if you've got no way of then responding to them, then you have a problem. And what we're also finding is that, you know, if you're advertising on Facebook, these are people who are not active job seekers, CV in hand on a job board ready to apply now. They want to express an interest. They want to start to have the conversation. You can start to collect information about them. So start the very early nurturing stages, you know, get an email address, get a uh, phone, whatever it might be, to allow you to communicate those people, allow you to have a conversation, what, you know, uh, find out what they've done, and so on. And you'll find it's a much more uh, frictionless process than if you go straight to a send me an email, apply your CV, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is this is effectively what we've what we've been waiting for apparently. Brilliant, thanks for that. I can't see it my end, and we haven't got jobs on either the chat talent or the talent finder site yet. It's interesting how they've picked some of these organisations. Who knows how? Yeah, I don't know either, um, and why they've picked me to to be able to see it because no one it. else. Is. Yeah. Weird. It, it is the bizarrest thing, but you know. Perfect. It is. It is. Right. Let me go back to. Um, da, 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 PowerPoint. There we go. I'm getting good at this. You are. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, there we go. So, are we back? Yeah, we are. Perfect. Thank you. So, we're getting towards the, the end of the 10 now. Um, number nine uh, relates to automation. So, um, as you as you asked earlier, Alan, about you know where is this going? I, I think automation is is effectively the kind of end game for for now anyway. And that is about using you know, a rule-based system, predictive analytics, um, to, to create individual marketing campaigns around individual jobs. And you know, whether that is uh, paid, organic, retargeted, passive candidate, active candidates, et cetera, et cetera, it's about the ability to automate all of this stuff so that as a recruiter, you, know, you are not spending your life managing jobs. You are you know, using technology to do the heavy lifting for you so you can concentrate on uh, you know, the, the real work, which is about finding the great talent. And then finally, I don't think I've got any pictures to go this one. Um, this is a bit of a, a soapbox moment for me. I'm, it drives me nuts when I see employers that have spent tons of money building a beautiful career site. Um, they've spent all this money explaining the value proposition, why you should work for them, et cetera, et cetera. They then advertise on a job board which when the applicant comes and sees their job, clicks to apply, they register on the job board, that person's CV goes into their database that they then sell on to a whole bunch of recruitment agencies, and then the CV is forwarded on somewhere else. And that applicant never sees their career site. Um, I just wish people would stop doing that because why spend all that money if, you, if that's what you're gonna do? You know, use sites that allow you to drive your traffic through to that career site that you spent all that money on and stop giving your valuable applicants into publicly available databases um, that the recruiters will, will then you know, be waiting over. You know, I've heard stories, again, back to our nurses actually, of agents, uh, recruitment agents sat there on that database, hit and refresh, ordering them by most recent, and the minute a new CV comes along, they pick up the phone and ring it. And fair play, you know, they're perfectly you know, allowed to do that, um, and it makes them money. But if I'm... Um, if I'm a direct employer, that would drive me nuts. So please just use the, the make sure you're advertising in the right places to make sure that it's it's not that is not happening. And the more the more advertising you do under your own brand, the more the more effective in the long term you'll be in terms of building your own brand awareness and talent pools and all those kind of things. I had a, I had a session, a strategy session, a couple of weeks back with a company who not huge, 500 employees, hiring 100, 150 people a year. They're growing reasonably quickly. And um, they got a, a couple of friendly recruitment agencies that were doing work on their behalf. And they were in essence, and this is all the company wanted them to do to a certain extent, were posting job ads on their behalf. 
but posting them as a recruitment agency using their branding. <laughs> And I'm like, that's madness. It's madness. Yeah. Not only are they making money out of you, but you're in essence paying for them to advertise their brand. Whereas yeah. you could get some automation to do the posting for you and use your yeah. brand everywhere. So it's, yeah. it's interesting, isn't it? People forget that recruitment marketing, recruitment advertising, recruitment branding is just the same as any other advertising marketing branding. It gets your name out there and people start to hear about you. Yeah, exactly. very much so. Perfect. So we're, we're pretty well, we've run over by a minute. I'm going to, um, I'm going to answer, ask the one question that's come through the Q and A. Um, and I think this will be a bit, a pretty quick one. Um, with Facebook jobs, will employers have to pay to post jobs? Um, you won't have to post pay to post jobs, but if you want those jobs to be seen, you'll then have to promote them. So yes. Yeah. Um, and it'll be on a pay per click basis. So effectively the way that you'll do it is you, you post into the jobs feed within your employer site. And then effectively, you can take jobs that you want to promote, you apply, uh, you, you, you put some targeting behind it, and then you um, apply some budget to it, and then it will distribute that job across people's news feeds so that they can find it. What, it won't, what you don't want to be doing is just putting a billion jobs on your employer site, because people will just never find it. So you need to be selective, and then pick out the jobs that you want, apply that targeting, and then that job will appear to the relevant audience. So, yeah, you just need to make sure it's targeted, or else it will cost you a ton of money. It's very much like a normal post within your company page, though, isn't it? Yep. There's certain Absolutely. things you want to promote and raise the profile of, you pay to yep. do it. People yep. might get lucky and land on your company page and happen to see that particular post or job, but actually the chances of that are becoming less and less, particularly if Facebook have put a certain amount of gating about how much they broadcast stuff that goes on company pages, clearly yeah, and if, drive the spend. Yeah, and if you've got a ton of jobs going on there, then you, it's just not going to work. I mean, the way that our system works is it, it automates that, so it effectively takes a, a creative advert and merges it with a job and then dynamically pushes it out there to the audience that you've selected. So the whole thing becomes a seamless automated process, and surprise, surprise, it drives people back to their career site so that people can get engaged with that particular employer, which is the way I think it should be. Perfect. I just spotted one question in chat. As we're, as we're overrunning by two minutes, we may as well overrun by four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a question from Thomas. This is about ClickIQ um, kind of more specifically, but we may as well answer it. So if ClickIQ optimises to the lowest possible cost per application and the cheapest candidate channels produce the least relevant slash filtered candidates, doesn't the system then optimise to produce a massive volume of the least relevant candidates? No, because, um, I mean, we've seen this from the nurses thing. So, you know, if you take something like, um, th the reason that it optimizes on, on the bids is because what you don't want to, you know, the amount that you pay relates to where you appear within the listings. So effectively, you are making sure that you're not overbidding based on the response that you want, because you don't want a, a thousand applicants, you, you just want a small number. But if you look at, for example, um, Indeed, for example, okay, that is probably the most competitive job board out there. And actually, we, we make the system, it doesn't, doesn't just look for cheapest, actually it looks for volume, and actually we, we set minimum amounts so that it can achieve the sort of volumes that it wants as well. Other boards, on the other hand, you're looking at, you know, certain boards, uh, the quality of those clicks are very poor, and in those cases, the system works backwards to do that. We can actually integrate through ATSs to score the applicants that come in and then upweight the media accordingly. So if you have an applicant tracking system that you know, does relevancy scoring, we can use that data backwards to apply that to the clicks. So the most valuable clicks, um, you know, the most valuable sources, um, in terms of the quality of those applicants, you, you upweight and you, you pay more, to, more for. But there isn't, at the moment, a direct correlation between how much you pay per click and the quality of the applicant. Same way as you know, advertising a, on a on a on a job a generalist job board versus a niche job board. You don't necessarily get better candidates. What you know, it, it doesn't quite um, always follow like that. Absolutely, I guess it's um, generally you're probably paying more per click for when there's rarer talent because everyone's exactly. competing for it, and that's what pushes the bidding price up yep. rather than the yep. channel that it's through, for example. Yeah, exactly.
perfect. Listen, Richard, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Um, you've taught yeah. me a few things there. It's brilliant. Uh, I think we've answered the majority of questions people have had. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you looked absolutely fine in comparison to me. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, it's been great. And uh, I look forward to getting back together with you in a couple of weeks' time for our Talent Tech Tuesday session. Everybody Fantastic. who's been on this call, I'll drop you an email about that. If you liked Richard and like what Richard had to say, I think you'll love um, seeing a more detail around Click IQ at some point. So thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everybody. Cheers. Thanks, Alan.